Hello comic fans, here's Earl Grey and welcome to my second video in which I'll go through my shelves of comics. Um, last time and the first time I spoke about this shelf here with my European, for the most part, sci-fi comics. For the most part European, to be honest, because there are some Chilean and Argentinian influences, Jodorowsky and so on. But today I want to show you a shelf that is totally uh, devoted to American sci-fi. Maybe a bit um, English uh, stuff as well, even though the 2000 AD stuff, that's far beyond there. So uh, today just this year, so no 2000 AD stuff, but a lot of good things to discover, I hope. So yeah, let's start with the upper shelf. I have a bit of the order uh, in mind always to start with the older books uh, on top of my shelves. Sometimes successful, sometimes not. You will witness here are some more uh, newer books and uh, vice versa. There will be some older comics down below for different reasons, uh, sometimes just the format. Talking about format, uh, here we have Flash Gordon and Jungle Jim by A um, Alex Raymond. Beautiful books, uh, highly recommended. Um, we have here the Sunday pages um, as they appeared uh, in combination uh, to each other, the Jungle story and the sci-fi story with uh, Flash Gordon. Um, the second tome is even more gorgeous because Alex Raymond uh, yeah, came to full fruition, I think, uh, here. There is a third and fourth uh, book of these, but they are not available. Totally out of print and not to get nowhere for same prices. Beside the huge tomes here, I have um, soft cover trades. Uh, the same stories, just reprinted in German and small, sometimes a lot smaller. And these are pretty easily uh, uh, to get on eBay over here. So, uh, another Flash Gordon, six from Sirius. But on the left side here, I have Beyond Mars. Um, from Elias and Jack Williamson, and this is one of these goofy tales when before they landed on the moon from 1953 and so on. And uh, it's totally against modern scientific um, insights, so they couldn't fool around with um, gravitation and, and the possibilities that there are that are there out in space. Uh, just great fun. <clears throat> a bit similar to Buck Rogers here, maybe. Um, a, co a collected edition of colored and black and white pages. Oh, I'll see this video will take a bit longer. Um, free comic book day mixed within. Uh, the Silver Age Omnibus of Adam Strange. Prison Ship. I bought almost exclusively because of the art of Esteban Marotto, as it is with, sometimes uh, with these Marotto books. The story is not as great as the art, but anyhow, the art is uh, such so great that it really is rewarding. And um, as always, a very good opportunity to get your fingers on old classic comic art are these uh, DC showcases or Marvel Essential Editions. In this case, the Sea Devils and the Great Disaster featuring the Atomic Knights. Then I have one of my IKEA boxes filled with EC goodness. Um, my first really encou real encounter with uh, DC lore um, I guess this was a, a lot on eBay. Weird fantasy. I don't have to show you all the stuff here, uh, I guess, but 
Here we have weird science. Um, I know, these are not the best way to, to get your fix of EC. Um, is there a best? It's up to discussion, I would say. I have over there behind this shelf the Fantagraphics EC editions, uh, which have the bonus to them that they are um, in black and white, but they are reprinted smaller than the other EC collections in color, so you can't get it 100% right. Um, so here, John Carter of Mars, um, the Bradbury Chronicles, stories from Ray Bradbury, um, adapted by different comic creators, uh, three books that I got for pretty cheap, as I remember. Rip Hunter, Time uh, Master. I did a video about this tom here, about this comic, a long time ago. <clears throat> I guess it was because of the TV series uh, that uh, they started at that time. Challengers of the Unknown by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. Jill Kane's Starhawks, three books. Um, and yeah, The First Kingdom by Jack Katz and maybe this series here, I haven't read it, and it bugs me a lot, but this is so dense in terms of story and mythology uh, and, and stuff to look at. I, I've read it, tried to read it uh, a couple of times, but then I had to stop within the first book here uh, because it's so dense. I see in the later books it's a bit more loose and not so much panels and text on each page, which is not necessarily better, but I hope when I'm through with Volume 1 one day, I um, can better make my way through the rest of it. So here is not so uh, old stuff here. Zod, uh, Scott McCloud's um, sort of superhero, sort of sci-fi tale. Um, this is not really classic, but pretty neat. Sparks by Ren McDonald. Got some library copy here or something. Um, Six Gun Gorilla. I wish they would continue with that series, because that was really fun. Um, Dendare. I don't know why I got that. One classic here by Georges Safinio. Winter World. I guess he's uh, Argentinian, one of the Argentinian great artists. And World Without End um, by John Higgins. This has a very special kind of art work here, as you can see. Highly recommend the book. So now to shelf number two here, and as you can see, um, for the most part, I tried to put uh, movie adaptations uh, in comics onto this board here and on the board below. Here we have Star Trek, Star Trek and Star Trek and uh, on this shelf here, Planet of the Apes, Aliens, Terminator, Predator and so on. Um, so, starting with Planet of the Apes, here we have these gorgeous collections of the old Marvel comics. Um, in black and white by different artists. Really wonderful stuff. Plus here in the IKEA box I have uh, Planet of the Apes, uh, the German um, issues, but oversized, almost magazine sized, with nice covers and uh, they reprinted the stories here from Marvel in black and white as well, but obviously in German. And I'm a big fan of what um, Boom did, not only with these collections, but uh, for the most part, and, and even more so, with the reinvention of the Planet of the Apes um, saga. These stories here, drawn by Carlos Magno and others, and uh, written by Becco and um, Hartman, um, 
they really expand uh, the Planet of the Apes verse uh, in a very good sense and it's really something for the nerd uh, and if you watched the old movies um, it's it's really fantastic. Even more a visual treat are these Aliens comics um, that were put out in the 30th uh, anniversary editions by Dark Horse. Um, for an instance, uh, this book here, Aliens, the original comic series, drawn by Mark Nelson. Uh, this is really very nice. And maybe even more this blue thing here, uh, drawn by Don Beauvais and written by Mark Verheiden and drawn by Sam Keith, uh, the second part here. And the first part is nothing to sneeze at either in case you love this crude um, pulpy way of depicting your alien saga. And here we have some more aliens related stuff. Some floppies. And of course Alien Salvation by Mike Mignola. And by Walter Simonson and Archie Goodwin. Very different take, Dead Orbit from James Stokoe. And here may be the best book of them all. It's a German tome um, with different alien stories from Richard Corbin, uh, Kelly Jones, David Lloyd, Eduardo Riso, Mike Mignola, um, a lot of alien goodness in black and white, really some, some book to drool over. So, and a bit quicker here we have uh, similar editions, uh, similar to these aliens books of Terminator, of Predator, and Aliens vs. Predator. Another book from James Stoko, Godzilla and some Star Wars free floppies, or I don't know where I got them, uh, lying around for free. Um, and Sweet Tooth by Je uh, Jeff Lemire, or Jeff Lemire. Um, my soft cover trades here. And Trillium by Lemire. And then one of the best series ever written, especially if you like comics with some political content. It's sci-fi, but it's a real bitter satire on uh, yeah, the world we are maybe steer, uh, steering at or going for. And very, very well-rounded series. Uh, the end here is was perfect. It ends on point and very emotional and great. Um, and this can't be said of many new series. They always st or used to start with great bravado, but then are some kind of uh, um, <laughs> I don't know the English word for for Rohrkrepiere. It would be the German name. Of course, no uh, Rohrkrepiere at all is profit. Um, by Brandon Graham and others, like Simon Roy and Farrell Dalrymple even. Um, a great series around this character Prophet that was once invented by uh, Rob Liefeld. So, and here's a bit more by Simon Roy. A collection of stories. Another Simon Roy book, little hardcover Tiger Lung. D.B. Cooper from Brian Chirilla around this famous hijacker who disappeared. And here we have The Fabulous Killjoys uh, by Gerald Way and Becky Cloonan and Sean Simon. Um, and this is wonderfully drawn. The story will, makes, will make a lot more sense when you watch uh, the music videos by My, Chemi uh, My Chemical Romance like I did, and afterwards I got a lot more of the story. So, and here's another of these um, 
wonderful Dark Horse editions and one of my favorite books here on this shelf, uh, The Best of Milliken and McCarthy. Uh, a no-brainer if you haven't have it already. It was my one of it was my book of the year from don't ask me when one of the uh, first years that I did these videos here. So on the next shelf we have Descender by Jeff Lemire and Dustin Yukin. Um, one and two. Real nice uh, series. The art is fantastic. The story is pretty great. And uh, here we have Star Trek Part 1 and these are the classic UK comics. Very goofy, sometimes not spelling uh, Captain Kirk right and, and so on, but all these flaws make it uh, even more attractive and it's really a nice pulpy old-school drawing. Um, a real serious uh, addition to the Star Trek lore, maybe, but I don't know. So here we have Star Trek Part 2 and yeah, IDW of course fooled me with the Stardate collection. The idea was to arrange uh, the comics, uh, the Star Trek comics, after their Stardate. But this is not possible since they always re-exploring the old times with the original crew and all the later stuff. Next up in line, uh, Star Trek Part 3, so to speak, uh, the Gold Key ar Archives, with these nice photo covers and a bit clumsily, but nevertheless pretty charming old Gold Key comics of um, Star Trek. And one soft cover with well, the new visions in which they... John Byrne did this, I guess, yeah. Um, which they used uh, screen stills um, to do some photo comics. I'm not so excited about this um, idea, but some do like it here. I have some random freebies I've got. And one, two, three, four, um, no, four, five, if you will. Star Trek part five are the newspaper comics. The complete comics from 1979 to 1981 and the second volume goes up to 1983 from the Library of American Comics. Fantastic stuff. Um, from now on by Maliki Watt. Some kind of a um, break here. Now we come a bit to more recent material <clears throat> like the series Thumbs and of course Little Bird. One fantastic comic from last year, one of the exceptions that I got in issues like Hydra, which I celebrated quite a bit in my video about abstract comics. So some stuff like Expansion, Gigant, which is much more fantasy, I guess. The Oven by Sophie Goldstein, Repo by Rick Spears, and then we have a little Zeret and Wrangel uh, section here. Okay, this is not um, sci-fi tarantula, this is just pulp, uh, the story is really forgettable, but um, here we have Space Riders, one of the funniest, color, most colorful for sure series of uh, recent years. So, and I, to be honest with you, I forgot it. I put in this box here. A New World here by Alish Kott and Mars Attacks. Uh, issues from last year, Stella, which I've shown you, I guess, in my best of um, floppies video from 2019. So oh, let's see here. So then we have Apocalyptic Girl from Andrew McLean, Prison Pit by Johnny Ryan. All the books. And 
And here's my Feral Dalrymple section. I love the man to death. He is really great. Um, delusional, pale fire, and I'm pretty sure that sooner or later I will do a video about these few books here, so I skim just quick through them. Uh, this is a rather an anthology with um, Feral Dalrymple in it, but other artists as well, of course, has the Reggies and other books from this universe here, um, up to Omega the Unknown and It Will All Hurt, Pop Gun War and so on. So now to the next shelf. Here we have East of West, written by Jonathan Hickman, drawn by Nick Tragota, volume 1 and 2. Volume 3 is on its way to me. Cowboy Ninja Viking by Riley Rosmo. Kaijamax, these gorgeous Oni Press oversized uh, editions of Sander Cannons. Wonderful and, and funny and exciting and original comic. Um, even bigger than the Dark Horse editions like Channel City here by Dean Motter and Michael Lark. Yeah, the originals by David Gibbons, Burger Books. Um, and here we have Brian K. Warren, part one, if you will. Uh, Why the Last Man. These deluxe hardcovers. I think the size here is pretty perfect because the art is very good, but not the, the pulling point that makes these stories so exciting. Um, for me it's really the story, so I don't have to get the, the stuff here in absolutes or so. Um, and what have we in between them? I think... Oh yeah, this is uh, Brian K. Warren uh, Part 2 Barrier and they were done in this kind of format and maybe the only series that, or for sure the only series so far, of Brian K. Warren that disappointed me. Uh, very interesting concept, uh, but yeah, not successful in my opinion in the end. And then we have DMZ by Brian Wood and Ricardo Buc uh, Bocchielli, um, which imagines a future civil war that takes place right in New York City. Um, great series, at least the maybe first three books. In the end, I found it a pretty dra bit dragging and repeti repetitive against common opinion. Most uh, would disagree, I guess. I guess there's no disagreement in terms of Fear Agent, uh, Rick Remender's fantastic sci-fi um, series collected in these wonderful, uh, very hefty Dark Horse tomes. Um, as you can see, I reread it uh, actually. Not too far in it, but loving it. Really, it's uh, one my, of my favorite uh, sci fi stories ever. And as you can see, here's uh, the Recremender section. We have Tokyo Ghost, Low, Gigantic, and last but not least, Black Science. One, two, and three over there. So, Let's go one shelf beneath, the last shelf. It starts with a thin hardcover called Someplace Strange, written by Enno Senti, but you may want to get it because of the beautiful art from John Bolton. Next up in line is Punk Rock Jesus, written and drawn by Sean Murphy, a fantastic satire on society and religion and media. Uh, drawn in his characteristic and very gripping and powerful black and white style. Another uh, series with quite a political punch is obviously Lazarus, like Transmetropolitan, let's say, um, written by Greg Rucker and drawn by Michael Lark. Um, one of the greatest series, in my opinion, in that way ever. Um, this is actually a cuckoo book here. Satellite Sam is, despite its title, not a sci-fi book, but a comic about the golden era of um, television. 
written by Matt Fraction and drawn by Howard Shaken, of course. And the reasoning here is a bit, here we have another book from Matt Fraction, Casanova, which is arguably a bit sci-fi. Um, yeah, okay, okay, lots of sci-fi. <laughs> Um, drawn by Gabriel Ba and Fabio Moon, the great brothers, um, great series. I did a video uh, about it. Manhattan Projects, um, Jonathan Hickman and Nick Pitara on this crazy take on the Manhattan, Manhattan Project in which um, Albert Einstein and all the other uh, scientists go go far out and wider and uh, beyond. Um, it's great fun. Uh, six uh, trades. I think it's enough of the, this kind of nonsense, but I could read uh, actually 36 uh, trade paperbacks over this kind of stuff. And we continue with some artists um, that use the energy of manga, let's say, for a more Western take on uh, this kind of dynamic uh, comic telling. You will find a lot, lots of uh, manga influences in them, but they're still a uh, very own thing. Um, first and foremost, it's of course Brandon Graham here with uh, King City and yeah, a collection of stories that uh, is called for some reasons Perverts of the Unknown and uh, some oversized art book called Royal Boiler. And multiple warheads, of course. Very adult stuff uh, in parts, so not. Christmas gift for your 12 year old. And here we have the Walrus, a Brandon Graham album. Album. <laughs> yeah. Very playful and, and loose at times, but he knows what he's doing and uh, has a lot of self confidence. And, um, just, just a joy to, to watch this kind of stuff. A bit similar in the way is James Stokoe. We had uh, some comics from him uh, over there below, uh, above, but here's wonton soup about this cook in spaceships. And so it's a weird mashup of uh, cooking and uh, sci-fi, which seems to be some Japanese uh, thing as well. Yeah, one of my favorite uh, series of last year, Murder Falcon by Daniel Warren Johnson, a uh, great artist, absolutely. Have I mentioned already Orkstein by James Toko? Uh, wonderful, colorful sci-fi. James Toko is one of the other guys. Uh, just pick everything up uh, when you see his name on it. You can't go wrong with this. Here's a weird little sci-fi uh, crime story, Old City Blues. And what's that here? Okay, Hardcore, a so-so uh, comic series and issues from Image. And Magnus, uh, the robot fighter with a new angle on it from um, Dynamite. And this was surprisingly good. Good story. And we have Nick Spencer's Infinite Vacation. Oh, I have to change the camera angle here a bit. And we come to an end here. Almost. Um, Star Seeds uh, by Charlie Charles Glaubitz. Very alternative, indie, artsy-fartsy, but I like it way of doing comics here. So then here we have Echo, the, the complete edition from Terry Moore, which omnibus, 
Motor Girl 1 and 2, both published by Abst uh, Terry Moore's uh, studio, Abstract Studio. Um, I still like uh, Rachel Rising a lot, a lot more. Uh, this is my favorite series by far from Terry Moore. Um, the King of Mars from Dylan Horrocks, uh, a German translation. And Southern Cross from Becky Cloonan. I wish they would continue with the series. Maybe they had and I was... I'm not aware of it, don't know. Wake by Scott Snyder and Sean Murphy again. This is a goofy one, Radical Hot Wire. A hot wire from the publisher Radical. And a very book that I own for a long, long time, Das Kling Klang Geheimnis, oh, what's from one uh, from McDonald and Littleton about those teddy bears. Uh, we have strange adventures. Uh, drawings, are, drawings are from David Littleton. Um, yeah, pretty unique. Let's put it that way. And we have Osh Ocean Orbiter, um, written by Warren Ellis. Real good uh, sci-fi. And um, convinced me that I have to read more by Warren Ellis. I'm, I'm totally behind my Warren Ellis reading. I, yeah. So, and uh, we have The Wide from Sean Phillips. This is by far not uh, the best book from Sean Phillips. But one of the best sci-fi stories already is, of course, Zaga. One, two, three. And this seems just to be half of it. Uh, somehow they suggested that they will do three more of these tomes here. Yeah, give me more saga. I'm fine with it. Do I have to show you the covers? I guess you know how they look like. And the same with Paper Girls, the other series of Brian K. Warren. I celebrated uh, this as well in a recent video. I got some interesting comments um, on that video on, on Paper Girls um, because uh, a lot of people seem to be annoyed pretty much about the language uh, Brian K. Warren used for uh, the protagonists here. But this didn't concern me as much because I just didn't get the... If it sounds goofy, hey, what, what should I do? I sound goofy myself or, and, and I really don't have the, the feeling for uh, the, the sound. I just read it and I roll with it, so to speak. Um, so, I don't know. Uh, Paper Girls, I really love it. It's not Saga, of course, and more to Saga, and let's hope for more beautiful science fiction comics in the future. It's, uh, it's a great time for uh, science fiction tales, I think, in, in, in comics. Not just uh, the, the English ones, but uh, the European ones as well. Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.